Before we begin, I want to make a quick disclaimer. If you are just starting out using Graphene OS, then I highly recommend not using the setup I'm about to discuss in this video. This setup will create friction, and friction is the enemy of adapting to something new. If you were hesitant to begin with when you installed a Graphene OS, just install the Play Store, sign in, download apps as you normally would, and get used to things. You can always switch at a later time. For everyone else, here's how I install apps on my Google Pixel running Graphene OS. So this idea was suggested to me around two years ago, but I finally set it up around one year ago. So this isn't something that was just shared with me recently and I set it up and now I'm sharing it. I've tested it and it's been working well for me. This also won't be a step-by-step -step guide. I will demonstrate installing three different apps from three different sources and give you details of my setup. But in the future, when I upgrade my device, which is still TBD, I do plan to make a step-by-step -step video then. But before we begin, I wanted to mention that I just published the second episode of my podcast, which is called In the Shell. If you want to find out how you can listen to it, head on over to intheshellpodcast.com, which I will link below. It's also worth noting that it's hosted on Yellowball, which is the NoBS podcast hosting platform I recently launched, in case you were looking to start your own podcast. So when you first install Graphene OS, you have one user profile, which is the owner profile. It's there by default, and you cannot delete it. From there, you can create additional user profiles, depending on how you want to separate your apps. In my setup, all apps are installed from the user owner profile, and I use the install available apps feature to push those apps to my daily user profile that I created. I like this setup because it lets me install apps from the Google Play Store without actually having that installed on my daily user profile. It's kind of like having a command center for app installations. So the recording on the screen right now is my owner user profile. And the first thing I did when I set this up was installed Orbot, which is a free proxy that lets you send all your device traffic over the Tor network. So that means that all of our traffic when accessing the Play Store will go over the Tor network, along with any downloads of system updates that come from Graphene OS, since those are all done from the owner user profile. You can install Orbot by downloading the APK from GitHub, which I will also link down below. So once we open Orbot, we can then click Start VPN. Give it a minute to connect. So we can see here, we now have a full device VPN, which means that all of our owner profile traffic is going over the Tor network. It's important to note that VPNs are profile specific. So while our owner profile traffic is using Orbot currently, if you create a secondary user, like you'll see later in the video, that profile will not be using Orbot by default. It's only for the profile that it's installed and running on. You also might notice that right here where it says change exit, I currently have it set to United States. And the reason for that is sometimes when you go into Google Play, at least someone who lives in the United States, if you have a different country set, it'll say app not available. And that's because the geolocation it's using or that it's classifying the Tor exit node that you're using as from another country. And it's not showing you that app to be available to download. I've seen that quite a bit with banking apps and a couple social media apps. So if you run into that issue and you don't see an app for your country, change it to whatever your country is that they have on here or something close and see if you can access it then. So one other quick tip about Orbot is I've noticed if I switch networks, like if I go from Wi-Fi to cellular or the Wi-Fi just disconnects for some reason, sometimes Orbot just, it might say connected, but it's really not. So you'll go to your browser and you can't access any sites on this profile. So what I found that helps is long press on the Orbot app, select app info, force stop, click OK, select storage and cache, clear cache, don't clear storage, just clear cache. And then we can go back, open it again, click start VPN. And nine times out of 10, that's fixed any connection issues I've had. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the first app store that I use. And the order I go through these is the order that I search for apps in. So if it's not available in the first one, I go to the second one and then so on and so forth. So the first one that I use is the one that's installed by default, which is the Graphene OS App Store. So in this case, I installed a Crescent from here, which is actually the second app store that I use. So go here first. If the app's not there that you need, you know, Android Auto, things like that. You're not really gonna find many apps in here. It's mostly system apps they put out, but a Crescent is in here. So install that. That's where I installed it from, which leads us into the next app store that I use, which is a Crescent. So again, there's not a ton in here, but this is being actively developed and they're always adding new apps and working with developers to get new ones in here. I do want to do a video just on a Crescent in the future because 
It's a pretty great app store, especially the stuff they're doing on the back end from a security perspective. So for the demonstration, I'm going to be installing XF Eraser. I'm just going to install that. Click install, that's installed. And that leads us into the third app store that I use, and that is Obtanium. If you've never used it before, it can be kind of confusing at first. I have a video dedicated just to using it, which I will link down below. But I use this for all my open source apps that I use, along with any apps that publish the APKs directly on their site or on GitHub. So for this, we're going to install NewPipe. I'm going to copy the link for GitHub. Go to Obtanium, Add App. Give this a minute to download. I'm ready to install, install. So something different with this owner profile setup, I always make sure to uncheck allow network permission. The reason for that is we're not actually going to be using the app in the owner profile, so it doesn't need network permissions. So once you uncheck that, click install. If you forget to uncheck it, don't worry, you can always change it later. It's not the end of the world. We can now see new pipe is installed. So, so far we've seen the Graphene OS app store. We've seen a Crescent, Obtanium, and now the last store that I use is the Google Play Store. And I installed that using the Graphene OS app store. We can see down here, Google Play Services. There's no install button because it's already installed, but you just click that and that's how you install it. So the problem with Play Store is that you need an account to access it, which sucks. Unlike Aurora, where you can use one of their anonymous accounts to access it. But personally, from a security and privacy perspective, not a big fan of those shared anonymous accounts, and I prefer this setup. So creating an anonymous Google account without getting your account blocked or locked is somewhat difficult, but not impossible. If you try over a VPN or try creating it over Tor, you will likely have issues creating it and they just won't let you. So what I do is I like to drive to a parking lot that has free Wi-Fi, you know, a grocery store or a coffee shop. I'll bring my laptop with me, try to look not suspicious sitting in my car with a laptop, or I'll go inside and sit in the coffee shop and I'll connect using their Wi-Fi connection. From there, I use something like fakenamegenerator.com to get a name, birthday, and whatever else they request in the signup process. And I use that information to fill it out. So those steps are pretty straightforward. The part that usually trips a lot of people up is when they ask for a phone number for SMS verification. And what we don't want to do is use our real phone number here because that would ruin everything we're going for, which is staying anonymous. So what I've had really good luck with is using a service where you can temporarily rent a phone number just for the purpose of receiving an SMS code to validate that you quote unquote own the phone number. There are free services out there, but I would recommend not using those. One, everyone can access those publicly. Two, most of those numbers are blocked and they just won't work. So unfortunately at this part, you're going to have to pay to play, but it usually ranges from the cost of 50 cents to $1. I will link the site that I use down below or actually in the blog post that I make for this video. I'm not going to mention the site here or post it in the description box directly. Don't wanna throw it out there on YouTube, but essentially what you do is you can pay with a credit card or cryptocurrency. So depending on what you're comfortable with, I paid with Monero. I rented a phone number and I put that in there got the SMS code, typed it in, validated my account, and I was good to go. I've done this setup with about 10 different Google accounts and haven't had any issues. The accounts have been working just fine on my phone and I have one for my tablet. I haven't seen any weird pop-ups. The accounts haven't been locked or blocked. So it seems like it's working. And with this setup, we're going to practice compartmentalization. So with this account, you're not going to use it anywhere else. Don't use it for a burner. Don't use it for just random emails. You're going to sign into your phone with it, leave it signed in, and that's it. Don't send emails from it. Don't, you know, don't do anything else with it. Just use it for Play Store, for downloading apps and updating them. If you get a new device or upgrade your phone, don't use the same account on a new device. Delete it, create a new account, go through the same setup again. It sounds like a pain, but this is how you keep things separate and private. And the great thing about having Orbot installed is that means all of our Play Store traffic is going over the Tor network. So all Google sees is a connection from the Tor network and your fake Google account that you created. One thing I know people will critique about using the shared phone number for account validation is that now what happens with that phone number 
I personally don't know. Does it go back in the pool? Do they reuse it for Google accounts later? Is it used for other validations? Things like that. Someone could get that phone number and now they have control of the number that was used to validate your account, which would not be good, but I think the threat is relatively low. And from everything that I can find, that number is only used to validate you when you create the account. It's not actually tied to your account. I just checked my account now that I log into on my phone and it says add a recovery phone number, which means that number is not tied to it. If that's changed for some reason in the creation process, I would just suggest then removing the number from your account. But from everything I can tell, it's not tied to your account. That being said, if your threat model does not allow that kind of risk, then I would suggest just getting a prepaid Mint Mobile or some other carrier account, signing up for a phone number, use it for validation, just pay the small monthly fee it is to keep the number active, and use that. So at this point, you can now sign into the Play Store using an anonymous Google account that is not tied to your real identity in any way, and all traffic is going over the Tor network. So I'm going to go into the Play Store, I'm going to install WhatsApp because it's a popular app a lot of people use. You might notice your downloads are a little bit slower going over the Tor network when using your Wi-Fi directly. That's normal. Tor is for anonymity, not for speed. Again, similar to Newpipe, we're going to uncheck Allow Network Permission. Select Install. WhatsApp is now installed. And before we move on to the next step in the process, like I mentioned earlier about changing the exit node if you see app not available in your country in the Play Store, the other thing you need to do after changing the exit node, long press on Play Store, go to App Info, Force Stop, and then Storage and Cache. Select Clear Cache. Don't select Clear Storage. That'll erase your account that you're logged in with. We don't want that. And then you can open Play Store again. And at this point, it should pick up the new country of the exit node you're using. If you don't do that, it kind of just has it cached the previous country you used. And you'll still see the message, App Not Available. So we now have our three different apps installed from three different sources. And the next part is to disable the apps in the owner profile. Like I mentioned, we're not going to be using the apps here. So to accidentally avoid opening them, we're just going to disable them. So first one, long press on new pipe, app info, disable. Same with WhatsApp, disable. And XF eraser, disable. So we installed the apps, we disabled them. Next step is to use the install available apps feature to push those apps to our secondary user profile. So for this demo, we're going to settings, system, multiple users. I created the YouTube demo account. So for you, that could be called whatever you want. That's the profile you're going to use every day. You're no longer going to be using the owner account to run your apps. So select YouTube demo. I leave everything set to default, but if you do use your phone number and SMS that's tied to the SIM card in your device, you're going to want to turn on the turn on phone calls and SMS. For me, I don't use the number tied to my SIM card. I have a different setup, which I will cover in a future video if people are interested in that. So once you make your changes to that, go to install available apps. You'll see a list here of all apps installed on your device, even if they're disabled in the owner profile. So for us, we want to check XF Eraser, New Pipe, and WhatsApp. So with those installed, we can now switch to our secondary user and see what that looks like. To switch user profiles, you can just swipe down from the top, swipe down again, and the little icon to the right of the number three, tap that, and you'll see the other users on your device, and you can select the one you want to switch to. Screen recordings don't work across user accounts, so I'll be back in a moment. So here we are in the second user profile that I showed you, the YouTube demo account. So if we swipe up, we can see XF Eraser, Newpipe, and WhatsApp, and those are the three apps we installed from three different sources. So this is how I install apps on my device running Graphene OS. And if you have apps that require Play Store services, you can just go to the App Store and install those here. That way they can use push notifications or whatever else you need. For my device, the setup that I actually have. So like I mentioned, the owner, that's where I install apps from. Daily, that's where all my apps go that don't require Play Store services. And the calls profile, I have an app that I use for calls there that requires Play services. So I have Play Store services running there, but not in my daily. And you might wonder what's the benefit to separating them like this. On a user profile, you can hold down the power button. 
and you can select end session. So say you have another user profile where Play Store services are running, you can select end session and essentially it puts that profile at rest. Play Store services are no longer running and you don't have them running in the background. Unlike with the owner profile, which the only way you can shut that down is by powering off the device. And if you're like me, it's not really an option during the day, you kind of need it turned on. So this is a great way to have the ability to turn those off without actually turning off your device and losing access to it. I also want to mention that when you install an app, there's only one instance of that app installed on your device at any time. So when you update an app in your owner profile, that app is updated across all user profiles, so you don't need to worry about updating in different user profiles. If you're curious more about how that works on Android, I have a video on that topic, which I will link down below. So after recording this, I realized that was a lot of information. It might seem overwhelming and you don't want to try it, but trust me, once you set it up, it's pretty much set it and forget it. You need to install a new app. You install it on owner, disable the app on owner, use install available apps, it's available on the secondary user, and you're good to go like normal. And with that, if you have any other questions or comments, feel free to leave those down below, and I'll see you next time.